how do you explain incident versus problem to a non it person okay i usually keep it simple an incident is when something breaks like email not working or wifi is down and users cannot do their job so we jump in fast restore the service and moves on on the other hand a problem though is what is causing these incidents it is more investigative finding patterns and fixing the real root cause i always say incidents fix the symptoms whereas problem fix the causes that's help business teams to relate great how do you handle a major incident the moment a critical outage hits i declare it as a major incident and bring everyone on the single bridge i assign roles one person lead one documents and tech folks start troubleshooting the key rule is restore first analyze later i send regular updates every 30 minutes so business knows what is happening what is going on and once resolved we do a short post incident review to capture the lesson learned from this particular major incident perfect what metrics show itsm value to leadership okay i talk about matrices that actually connect to the business impact like how fast we can restore the services how many incidents are repeating and how many changes succeeded without rollback often leaders like clear numbers fewer outages higher sla achievements better user satisfaction i also show self service growth and fewer manual tickets as well those trends prove itsm is saving cost and improving the stability as well okay how do you explain slas olas and ucs sure i usually compare them to a supply chain the sla is our promise to the business say uh, like uh, fix high priority incidents within 2 hours on the other hand ola are internal promises between teams to make that possible the underpinning contacts are vendor agreements backing it all okay so if one link breaks the whole chain fails i make sure they all align review quarterly and adjust before user even feel the pain how do you make keb effective and not just paperwork okay so for me keb should be a discussion on risk not a box matching or box ticking meeting i keep standard changes pre approved and only bring the real risky or business impact ones to the keb everyone there must challenge the plan rollback strategy and communication steps i document decisions transparently and track results after the go live when the team see the cab adds value not delay they respect the process and it will be in their you know day to day business why do many cmdb or csdm projects fail and how would you avoid it yes this is really common most cmdb fails because people try to load everything without purpose i always start small pick one business service define owners and build relationships layer by layer automation helps but governance matters most here if ownership is not clear data gets stale fast i also tie cmdb outcome to the real use cases like impact analysis or change risk that is how you build the trust in the customer and in the data as well great when should a request become a change yes sure if someone alter a system's configuration carries risk and need testing it is a change not just a request okay i explain to the team that password reset or access request are fine as request but code deployments or database updates need proper change control so it is about assessing the risk not the form name okay i usually set simple decision guide to avoid confusion between service catalog and change this is what i do your incident queue keeps growing how do you plan a shift left approach okay i first look at the top 10 ticket drivers and see which one can be self resolved then i will create a good knowledge article and expose them through the portal and chatbots next i will train elven teams with simple playbooks and automation triggers the idea is to move fixes closer to the user over time the queue drops and the l2 engineers can focus on the real problems instead of the routine noise tickets cool 
how would you connect ITSM with modern SRE practices like SLOs? Sure. I think both complement each other really well. SRE focus on reliability and user experience, while ITSM focus on process and structure. I did define clear SLOs for key services and monitor error budgets. If we start burning budget, we slow risky changes and focus on stability. I will align major incident reviews and problem analysis with those SLO trends. So this approach bring a balance between speed and reliability. AP1 outage just hit. Walk me through your first 15 minutes. The first thing here I will do is to take control and declare it as a major incident. I did get all relevant teams on one bridge. No parallel threats. Okay. My focus in those 15 minutes is stabilization, not the root cause. I will confirm the impact, assign one communicator, and keep the leadership informed and updated. If I can apply a quick workaround, I will do it. Okay. Once service is back, I will document everything for RCA later. Now tell me what does a good post-incident review include? Sure. You know, a strong PIR tells the story clearly. What failed, why it failed and how well we have prevented it for the next time. I include a timeline, key decisions and measurables business impact. We discuss both technical and process gaps, then assign the actions with owners and dates. It's not about blame, okay? It is about learning here. So I always make sure actions from PIR are tracked and closed, not forgotten. How do you keep the knowledge base alive and useful? Yes, I do believe in KCS. Create and update knowledge as a part of resolving tickets, not afterward. Every article must have an owner and expiry date as well. I monitor views, rating and deflection rate to keep the quality top-notch and high. We also prune old content during the monthly reviews. I tell the teams, good knowledge saves time and bad knowledge kills the trust as well as waste your precious time. So just keep it real and concise. What do interviewers really look for in an ITSM consultant? That's an interesting question. They usually want to hear the real stories, not textbook answers. They check how you handle the live incidents, convince stakeholders or improve the process. They care about your reasoning and communication more than the tool knowledge or tool clicks. Okay. I think being uh, calm under pressure and a business savvy really stand out here. Anyone can follow ITIL. Few can translate it into a business language. And that is what is required in this role. What's your go-to method for root cause analysis? I start by collecting a clean timeline and facts. Okay. No opinions early on. Then I use five whys for simple cases or a fishbone diagram if multiple causes exist. I always validate the root causes with evidence, not assumptions. Once confirmed, we raise the problem record, fix through change and monitor the reoccurrence. For me, RCA is about proving, not guessing, basically. Fine. How do you approach ITSM process maturity improvement? Okay, so I never try to mature everything at once. I start with a simple assessment where we are versus where we want to be. Okay, then I pick one process, say change or problem and improve it incrementally. I focus on small wins that show visual impact. I measure adoption through dashboards and feedbacks. So once that sticks, we move to the next process. How do you prevent change collisions or hidden risks? Okay, I rely on the healthy dashboard and change scheduling discipline. Every change request must list affected CIs and related services as well. We check dependencies and breakout windows automatically in the tool. I also encourage peer review for high risk changes as well. Okay, a quick five minute check can save hours of our outage time. So over time, people realize the prevention is cheaper than firefighting. So that's the motto here. Sure. What's your practical approach to building a service catalog? Okay. I always start from the what user ask most. 
laptop setup, access software installs and make those first. Then I design form that are clean and self-explanatory. Every item must have an SLA, approver and fulfillment plan. I review completion time and feedback monthly basis. The goal is to make it so easy that users stop emailing IT teams altogether and do their work by themselves. Great. How do you keep vendors aligned with your SLAs? Sure. I ensure all vendor contracts must have clear measurable commitments that maps to our business SLAs. We monitor performance jointly and hold quarterly reviews as well. I never rely only on their reports. We cross-validate with our own monitoring and reports as well. This is the best way to do it. If trend slips, we discuss the improvements before escalation. Okay, strong vendors relationship saves a lot of firefighting for you in the real time scenarios. Finally, the last question, what's your view on emergency changes? Definitely, you know, I keep them for true urgent cases, major incidents or security threats. We still require minimal review and ECAB approvals. Okay, so every emergency change goes through a post implementation review the next day. I track the number of emergency monthly and if it is high, we are not planning the right, right? This is the way to see how we are doing the things. So once we do that, so the aim is here, agility, not the chaos.